Within the space of two months, the entire world has come to a standstill. Nations as well as cities have come to a complete lockdown. Words such as self-isolation, social distancing, as well as quarantine have not only formed part of our daily language, but also part of our daily living. Phil and Alex from the third space, here we are here to give you a breakdown of the current measures, although seemingly excessive, why these are pivotal in combating the pandemic that we're currently facing. And if you don't know what we're talking about by now, it's COVID-19. This is our So, let's discuss a few numbers. As of the filming of this video, which is on April 12th at exactly 11 o'clock, the WHO has recorded 1.8 million cases ever since the first case of COVID-19 was discovered in 2019. Of these, 1.3 million cases are still very active. Of which, 400,000 cases have recovered and we've recorded close to 100,000 deaths. So this puts the global death rate at 6.1%. Now, countries such as the US and Italy have been hit particularly hard each having deaths of over 20,000 cases. Now, the former has about 500 cases in total, and the latter over 100 cases in total. Honing in closer to home, South Africa, uh, which is dubbed as the COVID-19 epicenter of Africa, has recorded 1,500 cases so far, of which 400 have recovered and 25 deaths in total. Now, if you're wondering, for us here in Namibia, we only have about 16 cases which are confirmed currently, three recovered and zero deaths. And those currently are where we stand. As it has been established so far, coronavirus spreads from human to human contact. The novel coronavirus of 2019, however, has been reported to be 1,000 times more infectious. Now, in theory, somebody with a normal flu is responsible for a transmission rate of about 1.3 to 1.4 people on average. If these people go on to pass on the virus in layers of 10, you will be responsible for about 14 cases in total. So, with COVID-19, um, one person is responsible for infecting three people. Now, if these three people go on to spread it, uh, on, and then this happens in layers of 10, the first case would have been responsible for 59,000 cases. That is immense. Now, most people usually have benign symptoms, and their course of the illness is usually less severe. But, for some people, they have severe life-threatening respiratory disease, which requires intensive medical care, as well as life support in the form of a ventilator. Now, to explain why current measures such as the lockdown that is ongoing and being reinforced by the Namibian government is so important, we're going to use the city of Vintage as a case study. This is in order to bring COVID-19 into an African context. Now, as of 2011, a population study done on Windhoek showed that it had about 300,000 people as a population in total. Windhoek, just like the rest of Namibia, has a dual health system, one being the private sector, the other being the public health sector. Combined, the public and private sector comprises of eight hospitals, of which only two, which are Central Hospital and Katatura State Hospital, caters for 85% of the Vintu population who cannot afford uh, private or uh, medical aid. Now imagine this, we have a total of 18 ICU beds in Windhoek to cater for 300,000 people. That is crazy. crazy. So, for further context, although COVID-19 affects everybody across the board, it tends to hit certain demographics harder, which are the elderly people and people with compromised immunity. Now, since 2019, the total number of people in Namibia living with HIV rose to about 200,000. Of these, 30,000 live in Windhoek. That is 9% of the total population of people in Windhoek. This doesn't account people living with other diseases such as diabetes, chronic respiratory diseases, cardiovascular diseases, as well as cancers. Now, we also need to account for the 10% of the Namibian population that lives in Katutura location. These are people living in squalor, uh, unhygienic conditions and earning below the WHO poverty line. This pushes the number close to 30 to 45% of the Vintu population depending on 18 ICU beds. That's pretty crazy. So imagine this. Limited number of beds, limited number of doctors, limited number of nurses. No cure. This is the reality we're facing. But you get the picture, right? Now, I'm going to explain to you a concept called flattening the curve. To do this, we are going to draw what is called an epidemic curve, as represented by bell curves. The x-axis represents the number of cases, so 10, 20, 30, and the y-axis represents the time that has lapsed since the epidemic's onset. Our curve will be over a month, starting today, the 12th of April, until the 12th of May. 
Now, there's another important line which is the healthcare system capacity which stands currently at 18. Now, not all that all these beds may be available because they may be occupied by people with other illnesses unrelated to COVID-19. Now, scenario number one. Say for instance that lockdown was lifted today and people were interacting not practicing social distancing. We will see a spike of cases that for the sake of argument we say double to around 30 cases. Keep in mind what we said about infectivity of COVID-19. The people below this curve will have access to healthcare facilities, but this group of people here will not, and that's an unfortunate fate. Now let's look at the scenario number two. Let's say we remain under lockdown and quarantine. This would mean slower infection rates, right? So over two months, we'll still see, say, double the cases, but at a much slower rate, and therefore accessibility to health services as more people heal at the same pace as more people fall ill. And this is the idea behind the concept of social distancing and self-isolation. Now, another scenario would be to raise the line by employing more facilities and healthcare workers, but this is a pipe dream given our current state of affairs. Okay, Phil had to go be a doctor, which leads me to wrap this up. Now, you might be thinking, I'm young, I'm healthy, I can afford medical aid, but that's just it, this isn't about you. This is about the larger number of people that you're putting at risk and could potentially infect by failing to adhere to quarantine protocols in whatever area you're staring at. The thing is, we only have a limited number of intensive healthcare services, as you've recently heard that we've talked about. We don't want these things to be overwhelmed, and staying away, social isolating, as well as in, um, adhering to quarantine protocols gives these people a fighting chance. So please don't be that person who doesn't want to adhere to it because you think you're special. We're all in this together. It's a global pandemic and we want you to try and adhere to all these. This is why you're under quarantine. We want to give certain people a fighting chance. That way we don't have everybody sick at the very same time. This has been Alex from Third Space. Hope you learned something new today. See you in the next one.